Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to send data in a shift register using only one wire. I'm going to encode 1 and 0 on a single line using long duration pulses as 1 and short duration pulses as 0. And then I'm going to decode that pulses and send 1s and 0s in the shift register. And how I'm going to do it? So stay tuned with me. So first let's understand how a shift register stores data. This is 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register. It takes data input and clock. So this is 556IC. This is I have used in a monostable mode just to generate the clock input and the data input. So this bottom LED is the data. The output is going to the data input of this IC. And this is the clock input. So let me explain you the circuit diagram. Shift register IC164. And how it's connected, VCC is connected to 5 volts, ground is connected to ground, clock pulse is given to the monostable multivibrator which generates the clock pulse. DSA and DSB are the two data inputs, they are both internally ended and connected to the data. So you can short them and draw a wire from them and give to the data clock pulse, data pulse. Q0 to Q7 are connected to individual LEDs. These are the output 8 bits, okay. MR is master reset and you can see this bar at the top. That means if you give a low pulse to this pin, the output will clear. But we don't want the output to clear, so naturally we'll give it a high, okay. Normally it's connected to high. So I have made this connections here to this IC. Now let's give a clock pulse to store data. So suppose our 8-bit data is like this 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is our 8-bit data. And this is the LSB, this is the MSB. So we'll send the LSB first. So right now the data is 0 here. We'll just give a clock input. Now 0 is stored. Then we'll send another 0. Then we'll send two ones. Okay, 1 and 1. So keep the data line high, 1, then again 1, then we'll send a 0, okay, then again 3 times 1 we have to send, 1, 1 and 1. So keep the data line high and give the clock input, 1, 1 and 1. So this is our data, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So in this way data is stored in a shift register. You got the signals. In order to store the bit 1, you have to pull the data line high and give the clock pulse. On the rising edge of the clock pulse, the ones are stored in the output. From the LSB side to the MSB, from Q0 to Q7. So now let's just give a clock pulse and store zeros all the way to Q7. And to store once, we pull the data line high and give the clock pulses. So it's clear now how data is stored in a shift register. What kind of signals do we need for the data and clock in order to store bit 0 and 1? So can we automate this process? Like if the data comes 1, we can, this data will trigger the clock pulse automatically and will store. If there is a longer duration pulse, then the clock pulse will go and store 1. There is a shorter duration pulse. Then the clock pulse will go, but it will see 0 here and 0 will be stored. So can we make this automatic and using only one line, can we encode 1 and 0 in longer and shorter duration pulse? And yes, it's very easy. All you need is a delayed clock block. So this is the block diagram. This is the delayed clock. So right now, if we give a negative trigger pulse to the monostable multivibrator, the output is given to the data. Okay. So let me explain you. So here, we will get a negative trigger pulse like this. We will give a negative trigger pulse. This negative trigger, this output, this is a signaling diagram, will turn on. Okay and will remain high for some time. This is the nature of a monostable multivibrator. When we give an input trigger pulse, the output stays high for some time. And the, this time for which the output stays high 
is given by formula 1.1 rc so i will explain to you this later how a monostable multivibrator works when we are going to see the three modes that we are going to utilize in this project so right now it's just a square wave okay but this doesn't make sense this one high is going here but it's not one right now because the clock input has not appeared so this trigger pulse will also trigger one delayed clock block and that delayed clock block will generate a delayed clock after some time so this is the time after which it will generate when the trigger appears and when the de delayed clock comes it will see zero here it will store zero at the lsb side now if i keep the switch pressed okay for longer duration the output remains high of this monostable multivibrator but this trigger pulse this negative has already triggered a delayed clock so my output here data is high but the clock is anyway going to come so when the clock comes it sees here one and one is stored at the lsb side so one stores here zero gets shifted in this position so in this way i can hold the switch for longer duration and one is stored if i hold just give a short pulse then the monocell multivibrator naturally gives a default pulse but that will skip that will get off quickly and the delayed clock will see zero and zero will be stored at the lsb side so in this way if a short duration pulse is given zero is stored and if a long duration pulse is given one is stored so let's see how this delayed clock block is to be made and i'm going to make it using all the 555 modes a stable by stable mono stable and 14017 ic so this is a complete block diagram of how we are going to send data using only one wire to the shift resistor so this is a shift resistor this is data and clock input these are the eight outputs and this three blocks in this yellow outline represents the delayed clock block the delayed clock output comes from here okay and this block also resets the bistable multivibrator so we need three modes of 555 we need 555 in monostable mode bistable mode and astable mode so when we give trigger input to this monostable multivibrator the data is a short pulse which is nothing but given by 1.11 rc which represents zero how it represents zero right now the clock has not gone so when we give a trigger input pulse this pulse goes and this negative trigger which is giving which is given here okay this negative trigger pulse will also trigger the bistable multivibrator the negative pulse goes and sets this output high it will remain high unless and until it's given a reset pulse so it will remain high and it will activate this a stable multivibrator it will enable this is given to the enable of the ic and the clock pulses will be given to this clock input of 4017 and the data rolling will start so q q5 will go high and then it will go low then q6 will go high then it will go low then q7 will go high the moment it goes high this data here is gone okay so the moment it goes high it sees here zero because the data here was a short pulse and it has extinguished it has diminished so when the clock input comes it sees here zero and it sees the data zero and it will store zero at the q0 position then q8 will go high then go low q9 will go high and go low then q0 will go high and go low then q2 q when it reaches q4 it will turn off it will reset this bistable multivibrator output will go low will stop the clock pulses that's it so once the cycle q1 q2 q3 3 4 at 4 it will reset and stop there when again the trigger pulse come 
it will repeat 5, 6, 7, 8, at the 7 it will give the clock pulse, then again 9, at the 4 it will reset. So if the switch is pressed for longer duration, what will happen? The data will remain high and if in the clock comes, it will see 1 here, right? Because the data is hold high and the clock comes, 1 will get stored in the LSB side. So let's make this circuit. Let's first make a monostable multivibrator using 555. This is a circuit diagram for a monostable multivibrator using IC556. So 556 is a dual 555 IC. That means the same package has got two 555 in it. So I'm going to make a stable multivibrator in, from one 555 and monostable from another 555. So you can see the VCC and ground pins are the same here. That's because it's the same IC. So VCC and ground are given 5 volts. 4 is given reset. Discharge and threshold are shorted and given to a pull up of 10K on the same node. You connected one capacitor of 10 microfarad to the ground. The trigger pulse, sixth pin is the trigger input. Which is given to one switch, which is pulled down. When we give the trigger input of a negative pulse, it means 0 volts. Normally it's connected to high 5 volts, but when you press the switch, it instantly drops to zero and that negative pulse is detected and the output goes high. So this negative pulse is detected when the voltage drops to zero and the output turns on and will remain on for the time duration given by this formula 1.11 RC. So 10K into 10 microfarad will give us 100 into 10 raised to minus 3. So 100 into 1.11 is 111, 10 raised to minus 3 is milli, so it's 111 milliseconds. So this output will be on for 111 milliseconds for this RC constant. Okay, so let's make this circuit, but this is a block diagram representation. The actual IC looks like this. It has got 1555 on the top pins represent 1555 and the bottom pin represents another 555. So I'm using this pins, discharge and threshold are shorted. Okay, here you can see discharge and threshold are shorted. Then we have to connect reset to 5 volts, reset is connected to 5 volts. Then trigger is connected to an LED, so to one switch which goes to ground and it's pulled up using a 2.2K resistor. Output is given to an LED. Okay, so all the circuit is made. So I've connected five volts. When you give the trigger pulse, you can see that the output goes high and gets low. So it's one tenth of a second. So you will barely notice it. You press the switch. So let's increase this 10K resistor to 47K. So increasing the resistor to 47K will give us 47 half a second. So you can see the output remains high for half a second and gets low. So what if we hold the switch, okay? What if you hold the switch for greater than 1.11 RC, which is half a second? and then release the switch, you can see that the output instantly goes low. So it acts as a NOT gate. So in order for the output pulse to be effective, you have to give a constant, you have to give a quick short pulse. But that's not a problem in our project because we want a long duration pulse, right? So if we kept the switch hold, greater than 1.1 RC, it will give a longer duration pulse. And if you give a short pulse, it will give a 1.11 RC, which is a short pulse, right? Not too short, just a simple calculated pulse of fixed time. But if you exceeded that time purposely, that's called a long pulse. So this is perfect for our project. So we will remove this 47K and replace it with 10K. So our monostable multi elevator block is made according to this block diagram. Okay. So our monostable multivibrator block is made, which is to be given to data. 
we give a trigger pulse, the output pulse is generated. Now the same pulse will go to a bias table multi vibrator. But first, let's make this A stable multi vibrator. So, here is a schematic for A stable multi vibrator. Here you can see threshold and trigger pins are shorted and given to a capacitor, positive and negative side is grounded. And between this point and discharge, there is a variable pot. With this pot, we can change the frequency of the output. So as it's a stable mode, the output oscillates between on and off because it's not stable either in the on state or off state. So in the on state, it remains on. Then again, it's not stable, it turns off. Then again, it turns on. And in this way, it's neither stable in each of the states. So the capacitor charges, and when it charges above the threshold voltage level, the output turns off. And when it falls below the trigger voltage level, the output turns on. That's why both the threshold and trigger are shorted in this case. Whereas in the monostable case, discharge and threshold is shorted and 6 which is the trigger is given a button. But here trigger is not given any button. There is no button here because it's connected to a capacitor. And it's continuously charging and discharging. So discharge from the discharge to the positive goes a 2.2K resistor. This two plays an important role. Resistors and capacitor play an important role in the output frequency. Mm -hmm. There's one formula for this. Okay. So T on, which is the on time is given by 0 0.69 R1 plus R2 into C. T off, there's only R2 is this. So off time depends only upon this two, but on time depends on the both. Okay. So the total time period depends upon R1 plus 2R2 into C because this 2R2 gets add up. So frequency is 1 upon total time period. So I've calculated that if we vary the pot between 200 ohms to 100K, we will get 252 Hz to 3.2 Hz. So maximum 252 hertz on which we are operating because as you see our pulse is just of 110 milliseconds, 111 milliseconds. So we want frequency in that scale only. We are not using a microcontroller to send signals. We are just using push buttons, right? For the demonstration purpose. So that's why I've kept the frequency low, but later you can increase the frequency you can lower the capacitor, lower the resistors and play with the circuit. So here you can see threshold and trigger are shorted. So this is a pin out of 556. We need to short the trigger and threshold. We need to short these both pins and from there to connect one capacitor of 2.2 microfarad to the ground. This IC needs to be provided ground and VCC needs to be given 5 volts and from this node goes one resistor variable pot okay this point remains floating then also it's okay the variable pin is a middle pin that we will connect to discharge Okay, and between discharge and 5 volts, we will connect one more resistor of 2.2K. So this is R1 and this is R2 and this is C. And reset, reset has a unique feature. If we give this high plus 5 volt, then the output clock pulses are seen. But if you give it low, it means ground. There is no output clock pulse, it's zero. Okay, low at the output. So it's a very interesting feature to enable or disable. To enable, just give it five volts. To disable, just give it ground. We are going to use this reset along with this bistable latch, as we saw, to disable the disable and enable the clock pulses. So right now we are connecting the reset to five volts. So the output is connected to LED. Okay just to indicate the flashings through a resistor to the ground. So this circuit is made on the breadboard. The output I have connected to an LED. Now let's connect this potentiometer. 
was like this and use one screwdriver to vary the resistance so let's turn on the supply and you can see the output is oscillating between on and off we are getting a clock pulse let's vary this potentiometer increase the frequency so decreasing the resistance will increase the frequency as you can see the frequency is getting increased this a stable multi vibrator is working now let's move on to the next part which is the bi stable multi vibrator this is a schematic for timer ic555 in bi stable mode in bi stable mode it acts as a set reset flip flop because internally there is a set reset flip flop in 555 you can see reset and vcc are given to 5 volts spin 1 is given to ground output is connected to an led so here we are using trigger and threshold to give trigger and turn the output on we have to give the trigger pulse low that means you have to pull the pin to the ground so we have to use one switch when we'll press the switch the pin will pull to the ground and normally it's pulled high using a 10k resistor exactly opposite is on the threshold pin so the threshold pin is pulled low but when you press the switch it will be pulled high so when you press the switch the voltage will rise the output will turn off so we need to give a trigger pulse a low trigger pulse to turn the output high means the led is now on and we'll give a high trigger pulse on the threshold pin the output will turn low so these are the waveforms we give a trigger pulse the output will turn on and we will give it high voltage threshold the output will turn low so in this way let's see how to make the connections this is the 555 pin diagram ground will be given to ground reset and vcc will be shorted and given to 5 volts threshold will be pulled down with a resistor and one button will be connected to 5 volts so when you press the switch high voltage will go to threshold and the output is connected to one led will turn on okay and the trigger is given a switch to the ground and one pull up resistor using 10k to 5 volts okay so here there is a pull up resistor and here the threshold is a pull down resistor of 10k so the circuit is made and you can see here on the breadboard so this is a bi-stable multi vibrator this is a 10k which is pulled up on the trigger pin and the same pin the multi mono stable multi vibrator also requires a low trigger pulse and that same trigger pulse is given to a bi-stable multi vibrator and here is a sixth pin which i have pulled low okay so uh, this wire when i will give high the output should turn off so let's connect 5 volts and see how this bi stable multi vibrator works so the a stable multi vibrator is working as you can see this wire is the reset wire okay reset is pulled high and when we we'll give reset low you can see the clock pulses are stopped so to enable and disable the clock pulses we require to give high and low at the reset pin okay so let's press the switch and which will give a short pulse at the mono stable multi vibrator also it will trigger the see so once we give a trigger pulse on the second pin the output remains high and it will remain high until we give a high trigger pulse on the sixth pin so let's give a high trigger pulse on the sixth pin the output turns off so how this bi stable multi vibrator block fits in our project and you can see the same trigger pulse which is going to the mono stable multi vibrator which outputs goes to the data of the shift resistor the same trigger pulse is fed to the bi stable multi vibrator trigger input when the output turns on it goes to the reset of the a stable multi vibrator the clock pulses are started and are fed to 4017 clock divider ic so let's see let's connect the output to the reset of a stable multi vibrator 
and see whether we get the functionality that we want. So we'll connect the output of bias table to reset of a stable multi vibrator. And when I will press the switch, you can see that the oscillation start because this bias table is now enabling the clock pulses. So when we give reset, when we give high to the threshold, the clock pulses are stopped. And the bias table output is low again. So now let's connect the 4017 decade counter IC. Let's connect the output of H table to this 4017 clock divider IC. Let's see the pinout of this IC, how the connections are to be done. So this is IC 4017. MR and enable are shorted and connected to ground because we want the IC to be enabled and we don't want it to be clear. So both are shorted and connected to ground. Ground is given to ground. VDD is given to 5 volts. And Q0 to Q9 are the outputs. Okay. This is the clock pin which will be given to the A-stable multivibrator output. Okay. So this clock pulse will start only when the bi-stable multivibrator is turned on. Now at the each rising edge of the clock pulse, the first rising edge comes, Q0 will go high. In the second clock pulse will come, Q0 will go low, Q1 will turn on. Then Q1 at the third rising edge of the clock pulse, Q1 will go low, then Q3 will turn on. In this way, all the way when it will go to Q7, the clock pulse will be fed to our shift resistor IC. So right now I will I will be not connecting all the outputs to the LED, just Q7 I will be connecting. Let's make connections. Let's connect this IC on the breadboard and see how it works. So the connections for IC4017 are done. You can see I've given it 5 volts and ground. I've connected LED across Q7 and Q4 and the clock pulses are fed to it through the stable multivibrator and as you know when we give the trigger pulse the monostable multivibrator output is the data which goes to the data input of the shift resistor. If the pulse duration is longer, then this is the delayed clock which will go and one will be stored at the LSB side. If the data pulse was shorter, then it will be low and then the delayed clock will go and zero will be stored at the LSB side. The previous data will be shifted. So let's see how this works. So when I'll press the switch, I will hold the switch for longer duration. So look at these two LEDs. This is the data and this is the delayed clock. So hold the switch. So it was high and then the clock went. So one is stored at the LSB. And now I'll give a short pulse. So it, it was high, then this blinked. So zero is stored at the LSB. You can see it again. So one more zero I passed. You can see first this LED blinks, then this. I will remove this bias table LED indication so that it's clear for you which LED lit up first. You can see the sequence, how it, how it went. First this LED lit up, then this. But if we hold the switch, then once are shifted. If you quickly press the switch and release it, then zeros are shifted. Okay. And when it reaches Q4, the clock pulses are stopped. And this LED is high indicating that now it's at Q4. So we'll press the switch. Zeros are shifted. If you hold the switch for longer duration like this, one is shifted. So we need to, the longer duration needs to be perfect in order to shift just one bit. But that's not the issue with the shorter duration pulse because that's managed by the monostable multi vibrator output. So let's, I will show you the timing diagram how this works. For those who want to know how it works. So this is a trigger pulse. When the trigger pulse will go, what will happen is, this is the output of monostable multi which is the data. With the short pulse, this will also trigger a bi-stable multi vibrator. Now its output will be high will start the uh, clock pulses which is the output of a stable multivibrator 
on each rising edge of the clock normally it's resting on q4 so we'll press the reset switch what will happen it will start from q5 so q5 will go high it will go low on the next clock pulse q5 will go low q6 will go high and then on the next clock pulse q7 will go high and we'll see here this is the clock pulse which will go to shift register so q7 is actually the clock pulse which goes to the shift register clock and we will see here data is zero, so zero will be stored at the LSB side. And the next clock pulse, and similarly, it will go all the way to Q4. And Q4, it will reset, it will remain high at the Q4. It will turn off the bistable latch. The clock pulses will be stopped. And in this way, the whole circuit works. Okay. So you can shift ones and zeros, shift any data you want, and you can give this signal from a microcontroller. I hope you got to learn many things about 555 and 4017 and shift register. So thanks for watching. Give a like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thank you.